Hello, this is a comparison between four night upright pianos that we have in stock and I'm starting off with this one because it's just come in today literally so this is also an assessment to see what sort of work needs doing on this piano. And by the way it's come in with this piano stool which matches very well and as you can see is a, a duet piano stool. This isn't leather top but um, I was going to make the comment that at home we've always had a uh, a non-adjustable non -adjust, non piano stool that's reasonably low, then we can put cushions on it for different people. So if you do have a duet stool, having a, a lowish one is, is a good idea. And it also needs to be about 8 inches differential between the height of this and the height of the keys. So that's obviously important. You can take the legs down if you need to. And look at the piano um, cosmetically, first of all. It's, pretty, it's good on all sides except for the top, which... Um, it has to have this ring on it here and it seems to look a lot worse on the video than in real life. This can't be taken out really. I think we'd have to redo the whole top. That obviously can be done but uh, there's another mark there. So that is obviously the uh, devaluing the piano. So we could redo that and uh, make the piano a little bit dearer or we could sell it cheaper. Um, normally you cover the top up anyway so maybe you'd prefer that we can do either really we do have to strip and repolish the top i think then the front of the piano is pretty integral sometimes you get a fade line here and there's a, perhaps a very slight suggestion of one but um, it's a good light color um, it's the wood looks a bit like mahogany to me um, but it could be teak i'm not very good on woods as if you've watched my videos before you might realize that but uh, so if you ha do know what that is, if you're subscriber and or just interested to help me out, then that's got a bit of damage there. That can be got rid of, I'm pretty sure. Um, and we can, uh, there's no other blemishes around this side. The, sort of the back of the piano while we're at it, because night pianos have this characteristic of having these jutting out from the wall slightly because the frames inside are so heavy on nights and uniquely heavy for a small upright that they have to have the casters protruding a bit from the back. The soundboard, by the way, they say it's made from the same spruce as is used on Stradivarius guitars. Um, I'll try and link together with their uh, description of how they make their pianos. We've got a couple of copies of that, so I'll put that on the, the listing. Uh, in fact, I think it actually says that on the back here, this soundboard is manufactured from the genuine Romanian spruce, which is the identical material used in the Stradivarius violin. So there we have it. And I've shown this label before too, so just if you want to, I won't read it throughout, but if you want to pause on it. Just to see that iron frame, and it goes right around the sides of the piano, which is not like most upright pianos. I'll show you another one to compare it, and there's the, uh, we're going to see the K20 if we zero in there. That number below isn't the official serial number, by the way. As we mentioned before, I don't want to go on too much. The other videos show similar things, uh, and the piano is in perfect condition. Curiously, the piano is made in 1971. I found this coin inside the piano. Let's just take it out. And it's a two pence piece with the date 1971, which is when decimalization first came in. So I'm going to leave that inside the piano as a piece of history. Sorry about that distraction, because what really matters, obviously, is touch and tone, as we've said many, many times. And this piano has been used, let's say, one, uh, one hour a day for five years we'll get that kind of indentation but there's still 100 percent hammer left uh, now the tone around this area because it's slightly indented has been made a bit softer now we could reface the piano if you want it to be louder or you might like a soft sound it depends on the size of the room so the option there of having a softer sound than average It's very even. We've said uh, the special construction of nights before um, on the top um, pressure bar here with um, it's a what they call a barless piano. Um, sorry, I won't go on about that because I've mentioned it before many times. If you look at the other night videos, you'll see uh, much more information. A very even tone and. Uh, Typically good K K20s and K10s are both exceptional instruments. And if they're not very warm, which we always choose ones that are not too used, then they're going to be excellent. This one's out of tune. It's, it's very flat. Um, 
certainly is pitch raising it but it, the unisons are in with themselves almost completely so let's say it's not been tuned for 20 years that's about five beats flat four beats flat i think By the way, knights have a well-designed lip for holding music, but you may find you want book holders which uh, can be fitted onto these. Here's a Wellmar with the book holders fitted, so that can be done. Um, and uh, there's, the alternative is Cat's Clips. So these are Cat's Clips um, available on our website if you want to want some. Email info at robertspianos.com. Um, and they're obviously movable, but if you've got young children or you're worried about them getting lost, then probably best to get the fixed book holders, or well, you may not feel you need them at all. Now the touch on all our nights are between 45 and 50 grams, um, so they're all very similar, but it's slightly on the light side, but fine for practicing and playing. It's better to have, if you don't play a huge amount, it's better to have a slightly lighter action. If you're a serious study, you might want to really four, four hours a day, so you might want a he slightly heavier action of, say, 50 grams uh, on average, say, 48 to 52. So this is not far out, really. I'm just going to try and compare them all now and listen to the tone of them all. This is a K10, pretty immaculate uh, casework, also very flat. Slightly mellower sound, that one. This K20 is slightly shorter piano, but I wouldn't choose it on uh, that basis. I like both of them actually. I'm very fond of this K20, but the nights are so consistent, so if they're not too worn, they're all going to be good pianos. Uh, that's of the night particular age, say 1968 to 1980, that's the kind of range we usually buy into. This is another K20. Uh, by the way, we have a worksheet for all of the pianos where we write down uh, what work needs doing and then we'll do some fine voicing later and note which ones need voicing. This K20, 1969, very similar piano, but finish is very different. There's a slight fading on here. We've done another video of this too, so I won't um, go into that at the moment. You can see the video of this piano under the listing. They're all very pleasant sounding pianos. So I nearly forgot to show you the comparison with an ordinary piano frame. If you see the frame finishing here, let's look and compare that to a night. This is a Wellmar, which uh, is our other pref really preferred make of small piano. Um, it doesn't really make it, from experience, Wellmars are very, very stable pianos as well. So there's the night with the frame going right, the sorry it's a bit dirty, it's just come in this piano, with the frame going right round the sides. Uh, so incredibly big frame, possibly double the weight of a normal frame. Uh, are they more stable than well, Mars? They're both incredibly stable pianos. If you're a technician, you may like to comment. Um, and the bridge is offset, by the way, on this one and on the Wellmar, as we've mentioned in other videos. So um, that's uh, both incredibly good pianos. <laughs> That's the night bass and the Wellmar bass. This is the night K20 1971 um, and I'm really sorry I hadn't realised we've been two tuners down because of the lockdown and uh, three of the nights are not in tune, they haven't been pitch raised in tune and not been refined either so it's harder to discern perhaps which is the best. This one that's just come in, I'm very impressed by. I'm impressed by all of them really, all nights are high quality pianos. And as I say, we're choosing ones that are not too worn, and ones in the right period of time too. Very inspiring to play.
So this is the Knight K20 1969, very similar piano, cosmetically quite different. This is shiny and has, uh, as you can see, has slightly two-tone look because it's obviously been kept closed, not played again, not very used. Um, there's some slight marks on the on the case, but I have made a video of this before anyway. So just let's have a quick listen to it. It's also a bit out of tune. It needs pitch raising too. This one's a, a brighter sound. definitely brighter and more, slightly more punchy sound to it so more suitable for jazz perhaps and the other one perhaps more of a classical piano and this is the K10 made in 1974 slightly mellower sound I think again this one hasn't been pitch raised and tuned. Just realised that all our night pianos in the workshop here um, are n need pitch raising and tuning. It's testament to, to how well they stay in tune because these haven't been tuned for many many years I'm sure and yet they're pretty much the, con the unisons, that's a bad unison. But generally they're not disastrous. If they were disastrous I would reject the piano because it means it's got loose tuning pins probably and that's very 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 unusual for a night of this age. They're very consistent. This is a very, very good bass on this one. So maybe your choice might be a cosmetic one. You might like the looks of one rather than the other because there's not a huge amount to choose, but they're all very pleasant pianos to play. Very pleasant piano indeed. So last of all this is the Knight K10 1978, so slightly later, but I don't think the construction's any better necessarily. This one's cosmetically pretty perfect, it's just the odd blemish here, I don't think you can see there. I don't think there's any other cosmetic problems on it at all. So that's a very good mahogany, satin, matte mahogany. Uh, I just want to show you the piano stool. This is, these are Spanish piano stools. They're our preferred make of new piano stools that aren't too expensive. But we also have the top concert ones of the same make. Um, and we try to match, obviously f get one that matches the piano as well as possible. We have a lot in stock, so hopefully you can match each piano with those if you want an adjustable. Uh, so they have a good adjustable mechanism too. Um, well, on to the piano. The, the, we'll listen to then the tone of the piano in general and I p we'll put a link to the other ones. Right at the bottom I'll put a link that you can jump from one to the other to make it easier for you. Now this is the only one that's in tune. I'm sorry about that. I didn't realise we're two tuners short at the moment. Uh, and, uh, well, we were two tuners. We've got, we're one tuner short now. So we're behind on tuning, basically. We've been tuning the ones that are going out and the stock can has not been in tune. So I'm so, so sorry about that. But this one is in tune. It's actually 442. Um, we set them at a 442 normally or 4412 because uh, they'll drop slightly normally when they get moved into the client's house. Um, so we try to set it at that and then when the tuner comes, it's going to be at concert pitch or slightly above. So they won't be having to turn all the tuning pins, which tends to, obviously the more turning the tuning pin you do, the 
looser it will get. So the idea is to turn them as little as possible when you tune. So I, we tend to pitch raise to 442 and then let it gradually drop to 440 because 442 is acceptable to musicians normally. Um, occasionally you have to do 440 exactly. This is beautiful. The other ones will sound as beautiful as this. I'm sorry that they are out of tune, uh, so it's a bad comparison in a way. But this is really beautiful to play. So in a way, because this one's ready and the others aren't, uh, it's not a good comparison, I'm so sorry about that, but um, I'll ha we'll have to get them in tune and then perhaps make another one, but uh, this one is a delight to play and the other ones are only are a delight to play but it's because they're a bit out of tune, it's slightly off-putting. The hammer wear on this one is extremely similar to the others, very, very little hammer wear. As, as I say, maybe, I don't know, an hour a day for five to ten years depending on how hard the person's been playing. So very slightly indented. Again, it would be slightly mellower uh, as, a result of, as a result of that. So this is the K10 1978. Uh, I will put a link, as I say, at the bottom of the text, you'll see a, a, a link. You just click on it and it takes you to the, where each piano is played. Of course, I'm more confident to play this piano because it's in tune. If you're not able to visit us, um, as I mentioned before, I mentioned on a lot of videos recently that we would be happy to, to, to make videos of any pianos that you're interested in. Um, and uh, you could do a video call as well if you wanted to, while I'm in front of the piano. Um, and then if you do find you get the piano and it's not quite what you expected, well, within a year you can change the piano. So that's no problem at all. We're here to serve and uh, really need to sell pianos. So um, please let us know if you're interested. Thank you very much. Just as a postscript, I did say we wouldn't be able to get the marks out of the top of this piano and I underestimated our polisher's capability. He did have to strip, sand it all down and redo it, but I thought it wouldn't match the colour, but in fact it's a perfect colour match, so that's very encouraging and obviously increases the value of the piano.